It is National Signing Day today, and the BYU football program is expected to have a pretty light day, all things considered. But is the BYU football program following a model that Mark Pope and BYU basketball laid out for them? We'll talk about it on Locked on Cougars. You are Locked on Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you for being everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. This is your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU sports, and it is brought to you today by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app today, create an account, use the promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. I'll tell you a little bit more about Game Time as we roll throughout today's show. But let's dive right on in. It is is National Signing Day today, so congratulations to the thousands of young men uh, and uh, a number of other athletes out there. They're going to be signing national letters of intent to play for the college football programs, most notably of their choosing. And it's an awesome day for all these young men to live their dream. But BYU football is going to have a relatively light day, all things considered, because BYU signed 28 athletes in the early signing window back in December. That was 95-ish, top, maybe more than that percent of BYU signing class for the 2024 recruiting cycle, and they're not the only one. The vast majority of Power 5 football programs sign the majority of their athletes in the in the recruiting cycle unless they have a coaching change in that early signing window. So it, it kind of relegates this day to a little bit of a, of a taking a back seat uh, to everything else going on in the college football universe. And BYU, if they sign more than five guys today, if there are more than five announcements, and what I mean by that announcements would be national letters of intent signed that BYU officially announces, there'll be other guys who are going to uh, join the BYU football program as walk-ons. We'll talk about one of them who committed yesterday in Tyler West here in just a little while. But if BYU signs more than five guys today, I will be stunned. Like I mentioned on yesterday's podcast, for those of you who are everydayers, I talked about Naki Tuakoi, Sefa Akila, and as well as Lance Reynolds, the third. They are the three main names I am watching for BYU to see if they sign their national letters of intent with BYU. And then beyond that, TBD. But the bigger point I want to talk about today is that BYU, I think, is banking on something that I think BYU basketball found success with, and they have found success with this season. What I mean by that is many of you might recall going back two off seasons ago now for the BYU men's basketball program, Mark Pope uh, essentially tore his entire roster to pieces, uh, brought in with, if I recall correctly, 12 new members of the BYU basketball program. Now, basketball programs don't have as many scholarships as football programs. In Division I uh, FBS uh, Power 5 football, you have 85 scholarships to work with in football. In men's basketball, you have 15 scholarships, plus you can take up to, I think, three walk-ons. So you can have 18 men on that roster. Well, if you bring in 12 guys, that is a 66, almost two-thirds, and always two-thirds of your roster being turned over. And that's what Mark Pope endeavored to do. Now, what was the result of that mass turnover for the BYU basketball program? Well, one of the worst seasons in recent memory, all things considered. I think it was a fifth-place finish in the West Coast Conference, and there are a lot of grumblings out there about Mark Pope's uh, job uh, being up in the air, his uh, seat getting a little bit warm. And the question was, could he rebound? Now, what did he do this past offseason, speaking of Mark Pope? He made some tactical decisions with regards to transfer portal, bringing in guys like Ali Khalifa, et cetera, who are uh, fit in uh, swimmingly with the BYU basketball program, but he bet on a continuity. He bet on skill development. He bet on getting extra work with the guys currently on the roster versus uh, completely turning it over once again. And what has the result been? BYU is extremely competitive in the Big 12. They're sitting in the middle of the pack in what is, no, it's not probably, it is the best basketball conference in the country. It is absolutely insane how good the Big 12 is. But this BYU basketball program, a year after having one of their worst finishes, if not their outright worst finish in the West Coast Conference, they find themselves right in the thick of things in the Big 12 Conference and very much in the mix to make the NCAA tournament. At this point, all things considered, it appears that they are playing for more for seeding versus actually going to the Big 
dance in March. That's that's uh, how good things have been for BYU basketball. And I'm wondering, this is my thought, and let me get to my point. It's kind of a big buildup to this. The payoff comes right now, is that I am wondering if BYU football under Kalani Satake and more importantly, BYU's offense with Aaron Roderick, I wonder if they're banking on have a similar type leap that BYU basketball took this year by essentially saying, we're going to stand pat with the guys that we have. Yes, we will supplement the roster here and there. They brought in Gary Bohannon along uh, with the other quarterbacks there. There's expectations they will bring in some offensive linemen, maybe a running back. But the vast majority of the guys BYU has on the roster are guys who are holdovers from last year. And the offense for BYU last year was not all that great. Remember, a lot of people out there were the whole hashtag fire Aaron Roderick uh, crowd. Well, that was the same crowd that wanted to fight or fire Mark Pope uh, after last basketball season. So the thought I have, and this is not an original thought, a number of you have actually asked me similar type questions in the form of talking about maybe a guy like Jake Retzloff taking a leap like Noah Waterman has for the BYU basketball program this season where it didn't look like he fit in uh, one season. The very next year looks like an integral piece for the BYU Cougars. And that is the thought I have for BYU football as a whole. Now, the mass roster turnover for football really came along the defense. And I think that was understood that Jay Hill, he wants to get the guys he believes he have the most success with on his defense. And that obviously necessitated him bringing in a number of guys, particularly both at the defensive line and linebacker spots. So the defense is accepted from this conversation. But I'm thinking that BYU football is banking on skill development, continuity, holding over guys who get to know each other and work better together, potentially with an extra uh, 365 days plus uh, alongside one another. That that is the payoff, that the offense for BYU will be better this season simply due to the fact they did not just completely kick a bunch of dudes to the curb, bring in a whole new set of guys and try and run it, uh, try and run an offense like they did last year. Remember, I talked about this on yesterday's podcast podcast. We talk about it often that last year, BYU football turned over more than half of the roster with 60 some odd guys on a 120 man roster that was turned over last year. Well, the turnover this year is far less than that. And I'm expecting, at least I think, well, I'm not expecting, I'm expecting an improvement for BYU from uh, my perspective personally, but I've got some sneaking suspicions that BYU may have seen what BYU basketball did to the leap they have taken this season and said, you know what? Maybe we can take a page out of Mark Pope's book and maybe just maybe it will be the answer for us. Uh, and that's as if I'm speaking as if I'm Aaron Roderick or Kalani Satake. Will it pay off? TBD. But the, the gamble is there. And ultimately, we'll find out 200 plus days away from now uh, as this 24-24 season uh plays out for the Cougars. The expectation is they will have a better campaign this fall. And if they don't, well, then at that point, I think conversations very much will be had more stringently, stringently, excuse me, inside the football program about job status of certain guys. That that's the the kind of the dog eat dog nature of what college football is, especially here at the power four level. So uh looking forward to seeing how it all plays out. But uh do you agree? Do you think I am up in the night with that analogy? Am, am I crazy to consider that BYU may be looking at what BYU basketball did, particularly for the BYU uh, football program's offense and saying, you know what? Let's see if we can have the same type of leap, take the same type, take, take the same steps that the BYU basketball program took and maybe it'll uh, benefit us in the long run. It's, it's a gamble. It absolutely is a gamble. It's a wager and it's uh, betting against the future, but uh, I'm expecting to see an improved offensive product this year and we'll see if the gamble ultimately does pay out. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we're talking BYU basketball. A tough loss for BYU on the road in Norman, Oklahoma last night. We'll talk about all that as we continue on right here on Locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. All of us want to go out to sporting events, uh, theater, comedy, uh, concerts, whatever you're looking forward to going to, whatever event you want to go to, I want to encourage you guys to give our friends over at Game Time a shot to get you the tickets. The best part is Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. And right now, new customers, uh, all customers, excuse me, get $100 off when they buy a big game ticket with Vegas 100. Think about that. If you want to get down to Vegas and enjoy the big game, you can get 100 bucks off with that promo code Vegas 100 with our friends over at Game Time. The best part is with Game Time, they've got last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. It's easy to find and buy 
buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. And more importantly, you can see the views from all the seats in the venue. So you know exactly what to expect when you get to the venue for your event. They have the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, and even job loss protection. Think about that, my friends. It's little to no risk on your end with our friends at Game Time. So download the app today. It's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. It has tickets on uh, deals on tickets right up to the kickoff and actually shortly after kickoff or even the start of any event out there. And best part is you can take advantage right now of the big game special they have using the promo code Vegas100 once again. So download the Game Time app today and get that $100 off using the promo code Vegas100 with our friends at Vegas. Uh, friends at Game Time, excuse me. Uh, once again, use that promo code Vegas100, B-E-G-A-S-100 for $100 off a big game ticket. Or if you're not going to the game, you can also use the promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase to whatever other event you happen to be going to. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at Utah Community Credit Union. Now, Utah Community Credit Union is the learn and earn feature part of the UCC mobile banking app. It is paying your entire family to learn about money. All this money smarter when it comes to our finances. I've been a member of UCCU since I was a young child. It's my main banking institution. I love that place and I've been using uh, the learn and earn feature to get smarter about money myself. The best part about it is it breaks down financial topics into fun, bite-sized educational games like quizzes and trivia. Every time a, new, uh, a family member completes a topic they earn points that can accrue and be redeemed for gift cards to many restore, retail stores like Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and many, many more. There's age-appropriate content for every member of your family. You all can compete against one another and track your progress on leaderboards as well. So get on it today, my friends. Learn and Earn is inside the UCC mobile banking app. Play it anytime, anywhere. Of course, the more you learn, the more you earn. It's as simple as that. It's part of UCCU's award-winning Be Money Smart Youth Banking program, helping kids, teens, and parents have fun with becoming more financially literate together via learning. Earn and earn. It's all courtesy of UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of your support of this venture. It's really been uh, gratifying to hear a lot of the things you guys have had to say about the podcast. I keep meeting people seemingly every day who are listeners and or viewers wherever you uh, catch the podcast, whether it's an Apple podcast, Spotify, you watch it on YouTube. But a uh, real quick request. I don't do this enough. I need, I need to continue to remind you guys to do it. If you've not done so already, you're just checking us out for the very first time, you're a relatively new listener, make sure you subscribe to the show. Hit that follow button wherever you're listening on the podcast apps out there. Like I mentioned, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and a litany of others. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to point right down here. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification icon so when a new episode drops, you'll be notified right away. You can catch it right away and get caught up and be the smartest BYU fan in the room, as they like to call y'all out here on Locked on Cougars. All right. BYU basketball, tough loss as they go to Norman, Oklahoma, Tuesday night, 82 to 66 is your final. And this was a game in the first half that BYU is hanging tough, folks. We, we all watch this game and you watch BYU go toe to toe with an Oklahoma team that was at home uh, inside their home gym there at Noble Arena. And the thing about this game is it felt like it was about two minutes to go looking back on it from my perspective. It's about two minutes to go in the first half. Remember, BYU uh, finished the half on the wrong end of a five nothing run that allowed Oklahoma home and tie up the game at 34 all at halftime. BYU seemingly couldn't buy a bucket in those final two minutes. And looking at how the second half played out, where BYU gave up nearly 50 points in the second half, I think that two-minute mark, roughly, uh, give or take, it's it's not an exact number. Uh, it's just my kind of my recollection of the game, is I felt like BYU's legs started to give out on them at that point. And in the second half, they'd never found that second wind. They needed to come back and uh, win this game on the road. You know what? Road weariness is a real thing in college sports and in any sport, honestly. And when BYU has spent five days on the road, and the other thing that's added to this is Noah Waterman, among others, has been ill on this trip. So how many other guys potentially were uh, not feeling 100% in this game? That is TBD, but that also added to this. When you play on the road, you're not in your own bed. You're not in your home gym. You're not feeling the same as you would at home with uh, the familiar surroundings that you're used to. And especially with the fact that BYU uh, traveled uh, from West Virginia directly to Oklahoma and just it kind of throws guys off. And I've talked with enough guys over my years in sports media now, uh, year 15 
uh, full time now as a sports uh, media slash radio uh, personality. It's crazy thing it's been that long, but the conversation is that when you go on the road, things just get off, and what it, what that means is guys' legs get tired, and that you really saw BYU run out of gas in this game. Now there are other things that fail BYU in this game: their inability to make uh, really routine layups, or uh, some people call them bunnies at the rim, really hurt them. BYU ended up shooting just thirty six percent in this game. That is ice cold from the field. BYU only got up 26 uh, attempts from three. And uh, there was, I think it was about four or five minutes to go in the game. It was something like they were only had 17 attempts at that point and they only made eight of those. So the, the shooting numbers for BYU abysmal 30.8% from the field uh, from three, as I mentioned, it's actually technically 35.9% from the field overall. It's just not good enough for BYU. And the crazy thing about this, is you look at some of the other stats that typically in losses for BYU that stand out that make you think, okay, that's, that's a big reason why they lost this game. Well, BYU only had eight turnovers in this game, so they held their own with in the turnover margin because they matched uh, Oklahoma with eight turnovers. I've talked often on this podcast that I believe if BYU uh, keeps their turnovers under 10, typically they're going to win basketball games. But this was a game, once again, that I feel like BYU simply ran out of gas. And that's disappointing because this was a, an Oklahoma team that they had their struggles in this game, but they came on strong in the second half and their ability to find their second win and uh, run BYU in the second can have gave them the win. They shot 49% from the field. They didn't shoot much better from three overall, nine of 26. So that's 34.6% uh, for them. They did shoot uh, 29 free throws to 16 for BYU. But that's kind of the story uh, for BYU all season long. They're one of the least uh, free throw shooting teams in the country. That's just kind of a byproduct of the way that BYU plays. It's not a, a, a product where they're going to go to the rim constantly and try and draw fouls. It's just not how BYU operates. But the shot selection at times in this game also uh, baffled me at different points. Jackson Robinson in his homecoming to Oklahoma ends up a two of eight, a two of seven, excuse me, from the field, one of four from three, uh, eight points overall. So not the night that he was expecting to have in 34 minutes of action. I, I feel like at times for like a guy like Robinson, he has got a preternatural ability to be a, an impactful basketball player, but there are times he is far too passive on the court. And it's not coming off as a criticism directly about him. And it's not going to absolutely kill BYU to have him be passive, but you'd like to see him, especially in a game that's uh, in front of family and friends. I think the broadcast said that he had 36 uh, tickets. He handed out to family and friends who had uh, traveled uh, from Ada, Oklahoma to Norman for this game. He would like to have a better game in this game. Uh, honestly, eight points was not what he was probably expecting in his mind, but his shot selection at time uh, times in this game, really just baffled me. Some of those deep threes he was taking when it's early in the shot clock, it doesn't seem like they're in rhythm. Those are the type of shots that you need to get rid of in your shot selection if you're Jackson Robinson. He's not the only one. Noah Waterman ends up with just three points. Uh, funny enough, those three points are the first three points in a true road game for him uh, in the Big 12. It's crazy to think that he has played this many uh, games for, for BYU, nine of them in all in the Big 12 so far, and just three points to his name. Now, Noah was under the weather in this game. He came up sick uh, on Saturday going into the West Virginia game and gutted it out to play 17 minutes in that one against the Mountaineers. He played 22 minutes in this game, and he very much looked uh, like a guy who was ill. But the thing is, his teammates, none of them really looked like they had the energy, especially in that second half. And as a result, they get boat raced. So tough result for BYU, but we've talked about this on this podcast. I know the DJ and PK have talked about it on the KSL sports zone, the show that I produce on a daily basis, that the goal for BYU right now should be go one and one each week. So split your games each week. And that's going to get you a pretty uh, nice record. It would have you sitting at nine and nine, maybe at the worst eight and 10 in conference play at, after all is said and done. And that would get you into the big dance. That it's crazy to think that the 500 or maybe uh, two games under 500 uh, conference record could get you uh, into the March Madness and get you maybe a single digit C, but that's how good this conference is. So BYU, yes, they're 0-1 this week. So now you got to bounce back and go 1-1 uh, by beating Kansas State on Saturday night. Now, Kansas State's riding high. They got a huge win over their arch rival, Kansas, in overtime. Uh, Jerome Tang is a head coach for Kansas State. is now 11-0 in uh, overtime games, so they are like nigh and invincible when it comes to overtime games, but they are coming to Provo. It's a late night. It'll be a 9 o'clock body clock game for Kansas State. It's an 8 o'clock Mountain Time tip in Provo. And I'm looking forward to seeing how BYU bounces back from this game. That's one of the hallmarks of this BYU basketball squad is they don't really let losses linger. And that, that is a positive 
for this BYU basketball program. So this was a disappointing loss. Honestly, BYU hung tough in the first half, but it felt like right at the tail end of that first half, the wheels kind of came off. They, they, they were hitting on empty. And the second half was the result of that. It was ended up uh, BYU. I uh, was 0 of 5 for their field goals to finish out this game. They went 236. They had multiple scoring droughts in this game. So, it's, it's a tough loss. It's a tough one to stomach. But like I said, I think BYU's got the, the gumption, the wherewithal, the resolve uh, to bounce back on Saturday night. And they need to because you got to go one and one. You can't afford to now sitting at four and five and halfway through the conference season. You don't want to be sitting at four and six and then look at the back uh, eight games of the conference slate and think, okay, we got to pick up, uh, we got to go plus two on the back half to get to 500 on the season. So uh, interesting uh, game all the same, and we'll see how things ultimately pan out. But a couple of comments from you guys uh, that I requested on social media, BYU Fortray, our good friend, Playoff Bogey, says Jackson needs to take better shots. Again, it comes with a good place, but if he didn't, uh, but if he doesn't make them, they are long rebounds and start the fast break the other direction. You're not wrong about that. Long rebounds are killer, uh, especially as, as good as Oklahoma was in training. Transition and with just how tired of legs BYU had, yes, you needed to maybe be a little smarter with your decision making. Now, making shots at the rim should be easy, but when your legs are not there, it makes it very difficult. LV Cook says there's no room for most everyone to be off on the same night. That's that you're at, you're accurate in saying that they were seemingly all off. We had a couple of people on site that were uh, tweeting that BYU just didn't look the part. You, 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 you're right. Derek Paulson, a D underscore forward underscore P says, got to make layups to win, especially on the road in this conference. Completely agree. But once again, when the, when your legs go, any of you have played any level of basketball, I don't care if it's junior, jazz church ball uh college high school maybe even played pro whatever it is when your legs are gone it's tough uh to hang with opponents and especially on the road so really tough night uh nolan mickelson says this we need the egyptian magician ali khalifa he was not healthy enough to make the trip to norman oklahoma the hope is that he'll be available for kansas state but tbd on that uh he does say that foos was good but the offense was pretty stagnant yes fuseni troyer had his second straight 20 point game he ended up with 21 in this game he had 11 in the first half and looked like he was just getting warmed up and he did as much as he possibly could ends up with 21 in this game but once again the other guys around him just did not have it tonight and that's a that's a tough loss for byu uh trevor at BYU Cougar Corner says missing layup, uh, missing layups lo- loses games, but the free throw disparity is getting ridiculous. Here's the issue once again, Trevor, is the byproduct of the free throw disparity is because BYU does not, uh, like I said, attack the rim. And they probably could be a little more aggressive at trying to draw fouls, but uh, it's just kind of a byproduct of the way that BYU plays. I, that's just my my opinion on the matter. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But yeah, the free throw disparity, it just continues uh, to, to stand out there. And I get that the consternation is there, but... Once again, I think it's more of a byproduct of how BYU plays. They were minus 13 in free throw attempts in this game against Oklahoma. As Trevor points out, the other seven games, they've averaged a minus 12 in the free throw attempts uh, disparity. But uh, it, it's a thing that you gotta, you've gotta you got to be able to battle through that. And when BYU's on, does the free throw disparity really matter? Because when they're making their shots like they have in other games, free throws don't really matter. That, that's the thing about this. BYU got 16, which is uh, above their season average in this game. But... Once again, I, I get the frustration. I just don't think it's that big of a deal in my mind. And maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, wild, for, for, uh, wild Turkey Fart Blunt, our good friend Ryan, uh, says, not doing the little things rear their ugly head once again. I agree. You have to you have to make those shots. You got to make shots at the rim in particular. And if you just uh, need to figure that out and find a way, uh, maybe slow down just a touch. It felt like there's times that Dallin Hall and Foose uh, in particular got a little too sped up on some of the shots at the rim and missed them as a result. Maybe you just need to take that extra, like kind of half second, uh, take a breath and then I uh, make the, make the back bu- bucket. So one of those things to watch out. Uh, one other thing, uh, two other comments real quick. We'll get to right here. They include uh, T- uh, Todd Christofferson says this, we should use a deep rotation in conference, find a new spark, a hot hand, a deep bench, put Y near the top of the net, give him a chance. It was just a clunker night. Shots not falling. I don't think it was even the X's and O's really. Uh, BYU has won all different ways. Couldn't buy a basket. I agree with most of that. The biggest uh, uh, thing I would quibble with in that is the deeper rotation in conference play. BYU has played with a deep rotation. The problem is when Ali Khalifa is not available, okay, that hurts you. When Atiki Al-Atiki gets three fouls in the first half, well, he's going to be glued to the bench. When Noah Waterman's not 100%, well, your rotation dries up really quick, and Mark Pope has proven that he's not uh, comfortable with putting guys like Trey Stewart, Townsend Triple, et cetera, into the games right now. So, 
The rotation uh, got shortened because of injury and health status, uh, and that's unfortunate, but that's kind of the thing that you have to deal with here. So uh, we'll see how they are able to bounce back, and the hope is that uh, good health will be on the way for BYU very, very soon. Uh, let's see. There was one other comment here. Uh, uh, Labter, uh, L-A-B-T-E-R-3, uh, says, worst game of the year. Back-to-back road games are tough. Completely agree with that. And then the final word will go to Taylon Jones, a BYU Cougar, Taylon J. We just need to hear your voice after this one, Jake. Uh, so, well, you're hearing my voice right now. So tough loss for BYU, but uh, they will once again have to bounce back uh, as they will now face Kansas State Saturday night. We'll have more on that game coming up later this week and take a little bit more of a close look at Jerome Tang. Obviously, he made headlines in the offseason with some what people perceive to be critical comments of Mark Pope over the Quez Glover situation. Well, I think BYU in a way dodged the bolt without Quez Glover on that roster because he has been out all year long with multiple knee injuries. You never want to wish ill will on a young man uh, dealing with injury, but uh, we'll talk more about that game, what to expect from Kansas State, and get you ready for that one coming up right here on Locked On Cougars. All right, coming up here in just a moment, we'll flip back over to BYU uh, football for just a moment, a pickup for BYU via the preferred walk-on route. The guy out of Southern Utah has committed to the BYU football program. What does he offer to uh, Kalani Satake and the Cougars? We'll talk about that next right here on Locked On Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Of course, it is Super Bowl week, and happy Super Bowl to all of you who celebrate from our friends at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and then placing some super bets and doing it with our friends at FanDuel. The best part about the Super Bowl, my friends, I am there for the game. I am a guy who loves football, and it's the final football game of the 2023, now 2024 football season. Uh, it's going to be a long uh, eight-ish months until football returns after this one. So I intend to enjoy this fully. I know that the commercials are there. I know the halftime show with Usher is there, but I am there for the game. But also, if you want to kind of spice up the action, have some fun with our friends at FanDuel. That's the best part about that. If you want to bet on if uh, Taylor Swift is going to get proposed to after the game, how many times she's going to be shown on the big screen down there at Allegiant Stadium, if she can make it back from uh, Japan. Maybe if you want to bet even she'll make the trip uh, from Japan to the game, you can bet on it all with our friends at FanDuel. So get on it today, my friends, and have some fun. Uh, you can bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but also have uh, which players will score a touchdowner out there for you guys, all kinds of player props, over, under, spread. It's all available to you now. And you can get $200, by the way, if you're a new customer. Join today, $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of five dollars or more wins think about that two hundred dollars in bonus bets if your single bet of five dollars or more wins from our friends at FanDuel so visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up today that's FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today make every moment more with our friends at FanDuel an official sportsbook partner of the NFL Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. I want to remind you guys to check out the law, first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube from our friends at the Locked On Podcast Network. It is uh, also now on Amazon Fire TV. It's called Locked On Sports Today. It's free for you 24-7 kind of the top sports stories of the of, of the day, excuse me, and with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find a Locked On Sports Today channel now on Amazon Fire TV or on YouTube and check it out, my friends. It's a really, really fun product, and I would encourage you guys to give it a shot. All right, a couple of things before we go on today's show is BYU women's basketball is back in action tonight. They are welcoming the Baylor Bears to the Marriott Center. It's a seven o'clock tip. So if you're looking for some BYU uh, Cougar uh, sports action tonight, watch the BYU women's basketball team take on the Baylor Bears. The Bears are ranked 13th, so this is a big game for the Cougars. It'll be on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. Uh, Jason Shepard will have the call on BYU Radio 107.9. FM if you want to tune in that way. Uh, I'm assuming it's a, a mixture of uh, Kristen Kozlowski, Dave McCann. Is Jimmer Fredette back on the call? Because he was on the call last week for BYU Women's Basketball. Tune in and find out at 7 o'clock tonight. Also, BYU football got another commitment uh, via the preferred walk-on route yesterday when Tyler West from Crimson Cliffs High School in Southern Utah announced his commitment to the BYU football program. Now, uh, West was part of the Crimson Cliffs uh, squad that won the 4A state title this past year. Had a monster season for the Mustangs. 1,300 yards receiving actually more than 1300 yards receiving 21 touchdowns and he was a very dynamic kick returner with legit track speed this is a savvy pickup just simply for the fact that he has got legitimate uh game breaking speed now 
Is it going to pan out where he comes in and maybe becomes like the next Dax Milne for BYU? Well, that's a, a, a gamble, and it's a it's a question of if he can live up to that type of potential. But BYU sees something in this young man, and he sees enough in the BYU football program that makes him believe that he can come to Provo and show what he's capable of doing. Once again, you can't teach speed. He's a sprinter for Crimson Cliffs. He recently clocked a 6.9960 meter uh, dash. I saw somebody put out on social media that that 6.9960 meter dash translates to a sub 11 second 100 meters which is well under 11 seconds in the 100 yard dash which is actually kind of one of the the markers that a lot of teams look at when it comes to uh, guys they want in a football program you want to have your wide receivers your running backs be well under 11 seconds in the 100 yard dash 100 meters is longer than 100 yards so it's good to see a uh, west uh, marking those numbers there are uh, some people out there saying he's able to run a 4-3 in the 40 yard dash so Really impressive numbers for this young man, and I think it's a it's a nice pickup via the preferred walk on route. He can come in, uh, learn the offense for BYU, and we'll see if he's able to pan out. Like I said, the, the kind of the I guess the hallmark of P- BYU's preferred walk ons as a wide receiver right now is Dax Milne, a guy who comes in, bets on himself, ends up as a scholarship athlete, and has now spent three seasons now in the NFL as a result of what he did at a, in a BYU uniform. Well, Tyler West has got to be thinking, I'm going to follow that same route, and it would be awesome to see that. Uh, pan out for a guy like Tyler West, but congratulations to him on signing with the BYU football program. All right, there you go. That's what I got for you guys on this Wednesday edition of the show. Uh, Coming up tomorrow, we'll do a full recap of whatever happened on National Signing Day. Did the three guys I'm tracking sign with BYU? Did they go for three? We'll talk about that. Any surprise signings and additions as well, we'll have covered for you guys. We'll have plenty more coverage uh, when it comes uh, to everything uh, BYU basketball as well as we are your daily podcast focused on all things BYU sports. So once again, thank you for your support. Uh, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing the show. I'd really appreciate the help on that front. And obviously a big thank you once again for making it your first listen of the day, your first view of the day, and also to all of you for being everydayers right here on the Locked on Cougars podcast.